for Sean O'Hare, I was doing an interview with Butterbean yesterday <coughs> about their fight. Sean O'Hare has a has a reputation as a great street fighter. I know you know a thing or two about Sean's street fighting history. For whatever reason, it didn't seem to translate into professional fighting. But what are some stories you could share with us about Sean? At one point, he was one of the hottest up-and-comers in wrestling, but unfortunately, he ended up being another tragedy. Um. Yeah, so that's another one. A lot of a lot of people don't know that I went to school with Sean. Uh, I went to five years of military school when I was a kid, and um, I just didn't play well with others as a kid. And it was and it was just an option that I was given uh, at age thirteen. And Sean ended up coming along, and when 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 he when he got to the school, all the cadets there were probably close to six hundred cadets at the school at the time. And Sean stood out because he was always, uh, um, and a lot of people don't know this. I mean, it's, it's just crazy that my connections over the years with these guys, but, but, um, Sean was a big kid. I mean, he was a, he was a, he was as a kid, he was, it had to have been six, two, six, three. And I think he was on the shit then. Um, and he had forearms like, like, I mean, it's the biggest forearms I've ever seen on a kid in high school. And it just, and he was, and he had a bad temper and the, the story that, the guys that know him like to hear, and I, I mean, it's God rest his soul. I mean, he, if, if he liked you, you were in good shape, but if he didn't like you, you just, you were, it, a punch was coming at some point. You just didn't know when. And that was the thing about him is that you didn't know when he was going to snap. But the story that, that I tell, and then, um, and it's, it's, just, I mean, I, I, there's people that will corroborate it. I mean, they were, they were there that night. Um, we were in study hall one night. And um, we, we, our barracks were the old, well, they still build them this way, but we had the concrete floors and our barracks were in an L shape. Um, and I was at the one side of the barracks, the one end of the hall, and Sean was all the way down at the end of the hall and the other end at the end of the, the tip of the L on this. And during study hall, all our doors had to be open and there were two cadets to a room. And I think I was by myself at that time. I don't know where my roommate was, but... <clears throat> We had a, there was always a, a professor from the school that was on study hall duty. And we'd have a different professor every night. And it just so happened that the professor that we had that night, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Burke was his name. And, the, and Colonel Burke was a big dude. He, he, he had to have been 6'8". And he was t- at least close to 280, 300 pounds. He was a, he was a, he was a big cat. And everything was quiet. And then all of a sudden we heard this crash. And right sh- shortly after, the, 10 seconds after, you could hear a lot of screaming. The concrete floor, we could feel the floor of the building like bouncing, almost like it was a little earthquake. Like you could feel it. And you could hear four footsteps like running, 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 running. And I've got my head, I know I wasn't studying because I never studied, but I probably had a dip in and I was reading a muscle fitness. Um, and the door to the stairwell was about one room down from mine. So you had about 10 seconds of all this running and screaming. And all of a sudden, I see Colonel Burke wore a green uniform. I see this green go by past my, my door and then throws the door open. And then I see we wore blue uniforms. I see this blue fuzz go past. And it was, it was, it was Sean. He was chasing Colonel Burke. Well, what I, no one knew what had happened, and it just so happened they were going down the stairs, and our wrestling coach and assistant football coach, Coach Motley, who was one of the nicest men you've ever met in your life, just and he was a he was a pretty jack dude. He happened to be coming up the stairs when they were running down the stairs, and he tackled John. And and I've talked I've talked to Coach Motley about it a few years back. He he works at a funeral home now, and I went over to see him back in Virginia. And, and, and I brought that up and he, he said to this day, he says, I, I can't believe that he didn't kick my ass. Coach Motley said this about, uh, he goes, cause I tackled him pretty hard because coach, cause I guess Colonel Burke had looked back at him and said, Hey, you know, get him off of me. And coach Motley just went into get him off me mode and tackled him and said that Sean never touched him. He just kind of held him there, but Sean, Sean was pissed. And 
they swept it under the rug, man. No one, I mean, because that was grounds for dismissal, but no one ever said anything about it. It was talked about, but but I don't know how they, I mean, he was still there. He finished out the year, um, but he was just from from a young age, man. He was just a hothead. And what had happened, I guess, to, to start it all, I guess he had taken one of Sean's books and slammed it down on the counter and kind or on his on his desk. And I guess he kind of just did one of these, you know, where you kind of push somebody's head, you know, and just kind of in an abusive manner. I mean, that they, they the, the professors around there during that time, this was in the late eighties. You know, you could still smack a kid and get away with it. No one would say anything. And I think he was trying Sean and Sean. So Sean took his desk. This is the part and threw it out the window or tried to throw it out the window. And that's why Colonel Burke took off like a rabbit. Wow. But, but then we had incidents. We had then when I hooked, linked up with Sean in the, in, you know, as an adult here in California, I mean, we would go out to the bars and we live in a Marine town here. I do. I live in, there's a camp, there's camp Pendleton right outside of town. And, um, you know, the, the, you know, Sean's a big guy. He's ripped. He's, you know, you get Marines, he, he gets a few drinks in him and the Marines would try him. And I mean, I heard instances of, you know, him beating up guys. He got 86 from two or three bars in town because he would beat up Marines. And, you know, he, he was just a, if he liked you, man, he was a good guy. But man, if he didn't, he, you didn't want to be around him. Were you surprised when you'd heard he passed? Um, I'd like to say, yeah, but I just, I don't think people with that mentality are long for this world. They're, they're battling, they're battling something deeper in their head that, that any of us can, cause he was, like I said, Devin, he was an angry kid. I mean, he was an angry kid. I mean, I witnessed it. I went to school with him and I mean, it just, so he carried this on, but I don't know, man. It's just, it's a shame that with all the, I don't know what kind of, I'm sure he didn't have any you know, PTSD, like a lot of, but it's, it's a shame that with the mental health that they're aware of now that he couldn't have maybe at least tried to find some kind of, because he's been gone how long now, Devin? Do you know? Do you know what year? It passed? seems probably at least 10 years, it seems. Wasn't it like 2012? I could be off on that. Somewhere day. around, you're probably right, but it seems like it was, it was a good amount of time. Well, uh, when I heard he hung himself by his bedpost, which I don't know how you do that, but whatever. Well, it depends who you're involved with, too, and what you're doing. I don't know what he was doing for work at that time or what he was involved with, but now, mysterious suicides happen. Now, I don't like to tell stories that I that I hear secondhand, but I, I knew a guy that he worked with at a nightclub in Hilton Head, and I think this is a, a police report, but he beat up two guys and a girl, um, and I think he put his... He, he put his fist through their door, car door window and pulled the guy out. That's how it was told to me. I mean, he just, he was just a different dude. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Support us on patreon.com for $1.99 a month to watch our full shoot interviews ad free and help our channel grow. Follow us on Twitter at The Hannibal TV for instant updates.